your uh, playoff losses don't feel as bad as choking a 3-0 lead in the Stanley Cup final. Oh, like, you, not even down. close. And like, even <laughs> if I, I, I think I saw it on like Reddit or something, it's like even if like the Panthers go on a revenge tour next year and win the cup, you still don't bounce back. You you win a cup in six games next year, doesn't absolve you blowing a a, a lead like this on this stage. And welcome into the Bruins Beat, presented by CLNS Media. We are sponsored by Prize Picks. Go use that promo code CLNS for up to $100 matched on that first deposit. And we're presented by Game Time. Go use that promo code CLNS to get $20 off that first purchase. Terms apply. I am Evan Marinovsky. That is Connor Ryan. Connor, what is up? Evan, I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing great. I'm refreshed after a week away. Nice vacation in the Cape. Just whew, right down. Just you in to, through the nose, to, out through the mouth. You go to Pirates Cove in Yarmouth? I did not. I did not. So we stay at like a – it's a family vacation. We rent a place that's like on the ocean. Um, and so we don't really leave ever. Like I you, probably got my car go, twice. You go to Wellfleet? You go to the drive-in? What do you – It's it's Mayflower. It's Mayflower Ooh, and Chapin. It's we're like in between. Um, so it's, uh, it's nice. Tide goes out like my, like half a mile. So, you, you know, when the tide goes out, you gotta you get the steps in, go all the way to the water. Um, but it's fun. I'm actually, uh, I, I don't know what it is about the beach, but I can crank out books at the beach. Just destroy it. Cause there's nothing else to do. Like I can't just sit and stare at the that's water the thing, all day. I mean, like, you, there's only something. so much you can do. I'm not really a huge beach guy. And that's kind of the reason why is that I'll go for like 40 minutes and then I'm like, all right, like I'm ready to go inside. I'm ready for some AC. I'm ready for some AC and, and, and mingling and having a few beers inside somewhere where there's where it's climate controlled. That's that. that I respect that. that. It, it's a, probably a, a rough take. It's probably a rough look for me. It means I just don't have enough patience to soak in the moment. But I already fry like a lobster anyway. So so do I. It's only so much. I so can do do, I. So. Yeah, I have some bad sunburns um, under the shirt, but I'm, I'm going to keep the shirt on on this episode. Okay, good. I'm not going to take the uh, shirt off uh, quite yet. Yeah, we're yeah, not the there Bruins, yet. When the Bruins trade for dry sidle, then then we'll change some things around. <laughs> then, it's, then it's all going to go off the rails. But <laughs> the shirts come off. Yeah, it's going uh, to be blasted. Magically gonna, come off. We're, we're going to be blasting LMFAO the entire time. You can't even hear us talking. It's just party rock anthem just playing on a loop the entire time. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be great. I, I no. think that would work. I think people would love <laughs> no, that. No, it wouldn't. It'd be awful. <laughs> yeah, I think people would love that. No, I think people would love that. Um, but it was good. I actually in the I'm almost done with uh, Ken Dryden's The Game, which I had a prep par- a, a parent come up to me this uh, winter and say, have you read that book? And I said, no. And he goes, you've got to read it. And I remember being like, nah, that's just some old guy telling you know the young generation to do it. It's actually a really good book. I highly recommend it. It's been a great read uh, if you're interested there in you that. There you um, you had quite the end of the week last week. You were on a duck boat. How was that? I was shocked when I opened Twitter and your Instagram story and saw the uh, the duck boat, and I, I was just fascinated by it. Uh, I mean, I will say, I'll preface, it was not a duck boat. It was a modified Ford F-150 with, like, the open Even leg. Better. The, the, yeah. <laughs> Even better. So they, they didn't put us on a duck boat. But, yes, I was very fortunate to be on uh, one of the media trucks where they pretty much just put you in the back. They strap you in. And you're able to kind of take in the crowd, get some video, got some awesome video, um, the whole thing. Check something off the bucket list. Unreal. The crowd was awesome. I think they said there's about a million people in town that day. Look it was crazy. great, too. I, I, I was kind of worried. And there was a few times really early on where like, we, we'd turn and we'd go down like Cambridge Street and people would be like, woo! And then they'd see me and like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> but that quickly dissipated. Oh. Thing. Yeah, I think uh, enough people were already, I think... Uh, had ingested enough uh, libations at that point that it didn't matter if it was uh, a stuffed moose on that on that boat you know, on that car, people would be losing their minds. So got a lot of great video. Um, crowd was into it. Doesn't get old. I think that's that's the most important thing, right? Is the thirteenth thirteenth title this century? Um, it just shows that you know as as much as we've I think gotten maybe used to it, still feels great. It's still awesome. Great to see that team kind of get over the hump when doesn't matter. I know this is a Bruins podcast, but we all love Boston sports. And I think to see that group finally win, see the city celebrate again, feels good. Feels back feels back to normal. Feels like things are, are as they should be in this city, right? What was it, five and a half years? Yeah. Five, like, a hey, long drought. Yes. That was a drought. 
it was dread. It's over now. So now the clock can restart. Um, and it, yeah, I mean, it was awesome to see them win. It was so funny to see. So did anybody throw anything at you? Did anybody recognize there was you? One, uh, I had a few, I was tagged in a few like, uh, Instagram stories of like people I know, like growing up would be like, what? Holy shit. What the fuck are you doing on that thing? What are you doing so out there? there? Yeah, exactly. So there's that. Uh, someone did throw a, a thing of a uh, Dr. McGillicuddy's. That was the one thing we got. There wasn't a, there wasn't a, uh, no Miller light cans. Nothing hit, hit us. Uh, shout out Amit from CLNS. He was on the same one as me. He had his hot hat oh on from God. the garden report. <laughs> And I, I, I know that he has one on anyway, because it's part of the I know I know they, they've got those uh, th- those hot hats for their podcast anyway. I'm like, well, you're well equipped. Like if, if there's a keystone light flying at your head, you're all set. If it's me, I had nothing. I had nothing on. So just hitting your noggin. Yeah, exactly. Did you guys take the McGillicuddy shots? No, absolutely not. No, It'd be a bad <laughs> look. I also, one, I, one, one, I don't even like Dr. McGillicuddy's and two. I don't even have me just you can have me just ripping. My 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 Boston Roback polo just ripping Doctor McGillicuddy's on the thing. I had to get that content, Evan. I had to get all well, that four K, dude. I got I got about forty five minutes of footage on like my phone through like I did like the four K setting. My phone, you know that GIF of like the orangutan who's like hooked up to the like, ventilator and he's like <laughs> about to pass <laughs> that out. Was that was my iPhone. My iPhone <laughs> was like screaming into the abyss to Tim Cook to save him because he was going through hell. Recording 4K it, video for for 45 minutes. It was like that uh, just along the lines of uh, monkeys. It was like that picture of the dude with the the hand on the monkey's back as he throws up all over the wall. <laughs> like that was your phone. Yeah, it was just spent. Exactly. It was done. It was yes, done. <laughs> yes, but he trucked through. He's a good soldier. He's good for still him. Intact, so we're good. That's awesome. Well, that looked, looked really fun. About, it looks fun. That'd be funny if I looked at the phone and it was just like, oh, Mark, like has been traded. Like it was something like that. We're waiting for one of those days. We had well, that we, happen last thing, year. I, Evan, with people, people are probably like, wow, Evan's like disengaged from what Connor is saying. Um, but I'm looking at my phone, just kind of refreshing because I got the new post notification like Chris Johnston and Frank yeah, Saravalli. Like, oh, 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 oh so that's, that's Zach Hyman. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a Zach Hyman quote about game seven, which is uh, Monday night. We're, you'll probably hear this Tuesday. Um we can get into cup talk in a little bit. Uh, I want to talk mainly Olmark in this episode, obviously. Just one last thought right. on the McGillicuddy nips. It would have been hilarious if you did take one. Like the lone Bruins reporter that you're like, I don't really, I'm never really covering the Celtics. I don't really care. Like down the hatch. <laughs> that would have yes. been great. That would have been great. Yeah, set, I see like set the tone. Video of Sam Hauser like puking in his, uh, I think I saw that in his he duck boat. He immediately pukes and goes up and goes, <laughs> it's like that's, yeah he's good he's trucking he's, 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 he's a wisconsin guy so yeah that was good that goes down easy that's part of the deal yeah um anyways the linus olmark stuff uh it's getting hot uh the stove is hot the senators seem like the team uh lots of reporting out there uh about um about that david pagnota from the fourth period had a story on monday uh says quote lots of eyes are on the senators this week They've been very active on several fronts, including trying to land Linus Olmark from the Bruins. As I reported a few days ago, Olmark is wa- is willing to waive his no-trade clause for the Senators. They're currently on his 14-team no-trade list. And if the two sides can reach an agreement on a contract extension, which he cannot officially sign until July 1, this should get to the finish line this week. So the Senators seem like the team, but there's also reporting that the Red Wings are interested the Vegas Golden Knights are another team that uh, is interested. So of course the, they, he, are. They, they can't fucking. Of course, help they're themselves. in everybody. They're in everything. Uh, and the Maple Leafs are not. <laughs> Omar would not go to the Maple Leafs, which I find hilarious. Of um, course. But uh, what's where are you at with the Lena Omar stuff? What, what are sort of your takeaways and thoughts at this time? I mean, it sure feels like someone's got to give, right? And I mean, it does seem like the general consensus, because uh, I know. Did Pagnotta mention it? I know uh, Dominic Tiano, who's fantastic in everything he does, uh, he's mentioned that Omar has indicated that um, he'd be fine with a, a, a deal with Ottawa, which I think is probably the most surprising thing, because I think when we talked about this the last couple of weeks, especially before the Devils made their moves, we're like, all right, Ottawa like makes sense. I, we understand why they would want a guy like Linus Allmark, but does Linus Allmark want to go to Ottawa? It does seem like he's willing to to uh, you know not use that no trade protection for it. And again, it might come down to um, something else we've talked about. Where again, is it the ideal spot? No. But if you're Linus Olmark 
and you also have to, you know, look at that next contract. And a team like Ottawa is like, we'll sign you for seven years. We'll give you a, a, a pay bump because we desperately need you. I think maybe that's where you kind of, you know, see the forest over the trees, right? If you're all mark of like, if you're looking for security, uh, financial security, especially, uh, and as a, a team that one desperately needs a goalie and is willing to pay you and seems like they're committed to getting better, at least, you know, I, I don't think they're as stable of an organization as, you know, some of these other teams have been rumored to be in the mix for Allmark. But um, if he's willing to waive that that no trade clause um, and and sign a long term deal, Ottawa probably gets you the best return, I would say, in terms of like if the Bruins are are putting a premium on Olmark, which they should, right? Like he's younger, he's younger than Markstrom. He's a better goalie than Markstrom. Um, he's got an affordable cap hit this year. And then you ideally, whoever gets him gets rights to, you know, sign him long-term moving forward. Um, you sure get a good return. And you look at what Ottawa can offer, whether that's players, whether that's picks in the first round, it just seems like it's more of what the Bruins kind of need right now. Like Vegas, I don't know what the hell they're doing. Like, and like they've got actual, like, if you're looking for like actual players, then maybe Vegas makes more sense. But like, I don't even, I couldn't even remotely guess. You can never guess with Vegas. Cause like they just trade guys on a whim. Right. But like, what, what would they be offering? Are you looking at, you know, Shea Theodore who like, I don't know if they're going to be able to afford him on his next contract. Are you looking at William Carlson? Are you looking at like Thomas Hurdle? Are they going to trade Thomas Hurdle immediately after trading for him? Right. Like that would be like, hilarious. What? Like they have guys that you'd probably covet, but I just don't know how feasible that is. And again, those are uh, dangerous things to say about Vegas in terms of I don't know how feasible that is because they'll do it anyway. But if Ottawa is the team that is willing to step up to the plate, and most importantly, Allmark wants to is willing to waive that no trade clause, you can open the door to a lot of different things that help help the Bruins. Like let's face it, if they move Allmark and free up the cap space. And put him in a spot where he can thrive as a number one, and you you carve out space for Swayman. You're in a good spot. You've got five million to work with. If you're able to then add a first round pick or an impact player or two on top of that, then you're rolling with house money, right? And it does seem like Ottawa, based on the fact that they have multiple first round picks, they've got guys like Chickering or maybe like a younger forward or something like that. They have a lot of different ways to kind of help out the Bruins and make the most out of moving an asset that. Maybe it's expendable, but it doesn't mean the Bruins should be like, all right, here you go. Move on with this guy. This guy still has a lot of value in terms of what he can bring to a lot of different teams. Well, I think this is why they're driving the price up so much with the Senators. The Senators are an in-division team. And, you know, yeah. we mentioned this with the Maple Leafs. Like, if you trade an Olmark to Toronto, you are making them better, really good, yeah. and a better shot at beating you in the playoffs. Um, now, Ottawa is not on the Leafs level. They're not really even close. But... You give that team competent goaltending now, they're a bigger threat. Like, I think there will, be, you know, if and when they do get Omar, which it feels like it's only inevitable at this point, I think it is going to happen. Um, they're a team that is in the mix. Not to say that they are cup contenders or anything like that, but they're in the mix for a lot of points in the Atlantic and maybe a wild card spot. And, like, I think that improves them. I mean, their goaltending sucked Dude, <laughs> last bad. year. Really bad. Horrible. Horrible. So it's an imp whether their defense is good in front of Lena Solmark or not, you're getting a severe upgrade, a good upgrade in net, and they're going to be better. And so the, I think the Bruins have that on their hand in terms of, you know, art of the deal type stuff of, hey, let's, you know, we're making you better, a divisional opponent. You got to cough some stuff up for this. And I think the Senators are desperate enough to do it. I always say never count out how desperate a team can be. Um, when they need something and you see it all the time. And I think, you know, the senators are kind of falling in line uh, with needing a goalie and Lena Solmark is a fit and it, and he would get a big payday, which I think is a big thing of what he wants. And as I say, Connor, go where you're wanted. And in Ottawa, I mean, he would be, so I see Ottawa senators fans all over Twitter being like, Steve Steos, please get this done. Please do this. Uh, Cause mm -hmm. it would provide a legit, it would fill a need uh, in terms of packages in return. What, we're looking for the Bruins to get. I want to get to that in a second. But first, a quick word from our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. 
you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. With the finals over, the hoop action doesn't stop on prize picks. Women's basketball is heating up. Stars like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese looking to make names for themselves alongside greats like Brianna Stewart and AJ Wilson. You can win up to 100 times your cash watching them ball out. And there's also the MLB. The Red Sox are battling for a playoff spot. And prize picks makes the action even more fun. How about that Jaron Duran? Rafi Devers? Tyler O'Neal looks like the real deal too. And I was, I was a big prize picks fan during the Celtics run to the NBA Finals. And not to brag... But I was a winner. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. So, in terms of a return, uh, about a month ago, uh, the Ottawa Sun had reported that an NHL executive had said that a, a return for Olmark would be like Chikrin, their top first round pick. And then like another pick or a top prospect. And we kind of were like, oh my God, like if that's what it is, then you got to, you know, there's no way that could ever be it. Starting to feel like that actually might be it. And if the Bruins can somehow like in a trade package, get that Chikrin, a top 10 pick in the NHL draft and, you know, a future pick or a second rounder or a top prospect. Like if that's the return, holy crap, like that is that is satisfying a need now and that's satisfying future needs too the question is is that what it is to me i feel like it's going to be a variation of that i think it's going to be you know just off you know what i've seen and what's been reported it feels like it might come in a little less than that you know maybe a first and a prospect maybe chikrin and a future pick but i don't know maybe it is more than that what do you think yeah it's so tough to gauge right i mean i don't think the bruins are getting the number 7 pick like That's unless like something is gone. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see that as being again, like if you come away with players and the number twenty five and you get a first round pick and you're able to, you know, add to your prospect pool there, that'd be great. Like who knows, maybe it's concession. Would you want the number seven pick or do you want twenty five and player? Sure. Right? Like that's maybe something you, you weigh there. Um but it does seem like if the Bruins are, are you know, putting a, a high price out there for Omar, it does seem like a team that's desperate, like Ottawa is willing to pay for it. So if you're able to get like number 25, a guy like Chikorin and like a, another pick or like a prospect, like, you know, there's that that forward Zach Ost- Ostabchuk, I think is how you say his name. Um, again, I don't think he's he's more of like a bottom six guy, but six three hits everything that moves. Uh, a guy that ideally could, you know, fill out and be a key piece of your bottom six moving forward. Like maybe a player like that. Um, that could be someone that if you're able to get uh, a player like Chikorin, uh, a prospect or someone like that, that can fill in a need probably sooner rather than later. And like the number 25 pick, I think you're doing backflips if you're the Bruins. Like, again, oh, yeah, yeah, you could I mean, you could you could make the case that um even if the return is less than that, and like it's it's you take one of those things out of the equation, you're still coming away with house money. Whether it's a first round pick, um, Chikorin, like again, like we, we talk about Chikorin, I, mean, I think we've talked about him so much over the years that we kind of know what to expect from him. But as much as you know, we've talked about the fact that Bruins need kind of a a Brendan Dillon or a you know Alec Martinez, someone like that. Like Chikorin would <laughs> make your team better, man. You've got a top four 100%. with Chikorin. Uh, with Chikorin, Lindholm, McAvoy, Kahlo, Lorai, and, and Peak are your third pair. And, like, again, uh, we talk about cutting into Lorai's minutes, but it allows you to ease into Lorai's, you know, reps early on. Chikorin adds a lot of offense from the blue line, has a great shot. So uh, I just think that, you know, if it's a guy like Chikorin, yes, is it a top six forward? Is it a top six center? No, but, like, man, your decor gets a lot better it helps out a guy like McAvoy if he's paired with him it allows both McAvoy and even Lindholm to not really be that go-to offensive you know kind of conduit out there which helps you out quite a bit um I think it just makes everyone better if you're able to get a guy like him like what I I think the the best case scenario which I don't think is going to happen is like if you're able to get like Shane Pinto I would give up the I would say like I don't even need the first round pick I don't need the other prospect if you get like Shane Pinto or someone like that that is like the home run of like a guy that again, didn't the CAA, senators say they weren't going to do that though. Yes. Yeah. So that's the thing is like, if you're looking at what player that would be 
around that range. Because like Chickman's a really a really good player. Like, and I understand why maybe they think he's expendable. If you're able to get like a centerman out of that, a guy like Pinto, who again, like, is he a future seventy point guy? I don't know, but he's a he's a sixty point guy, a guy who's really good in his own zone. Like, that would be the ideal get. But let me tell you, if if it's a first round pick, a top four defenseman in Chickman, and then another second or third round pick, a prospect, a guy that, you know, can be a plug and play guy pretty early on. You are thrilled if you're the Bruins and that's what it is. And again, like we've talked about this too, Evan, uh, we were going into this off season being like, Oh, if it's two seconds, you know, it's whatever. Now we're like, well, if it's not Chickering and a first round pick and a prospect, <laughs> like, you know, maybe they should just keep them. Well, that's the thing. And I, and I think, you know, we've seen the price rise uh, credit to Sweeney and the Bruins for sticking hopefully to a high price uh, and the Markstrom trade happening. Uh, that was, you know, a first in 2025. Um, I also think there's another scenario where like, let's say it's a, just a first, let's say it's the 20, the, the 25th overall pick and a prospect or the 25th overall pick and a future second or a second this year, whatever. And there's no chicken. I still think with the cap savings of Olmark, yes. that's another player in free agency. So you can chalk up, you know, uh, if 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 it is Olmark for the twenty fifth pick and a prospect or something like that, and they don't get a player back, the player that they get back really will be an added wing in free agency. Tavoli, Duclair, yeah, like adding, you don't sign one of those guys, yeah, yeah, or or turning around and making another trade with that extra cap space, like. That's the point of the cap space. Now, if it's Chikrin, that's awesome. I mean, again, as you said, Chikrin, the 25th pick and, you know, a prospect or future draft pick, whatever it is, that would be as good as it gets because you're you're automatically now one of, definitely one of the best defenses in the league, if not the best. Not to mention you're now kind of fortifying things in front of Jeremy Swayman, so you have a better top four. You can ease low, low rye into it. So I think that's the best case scenario. But even if that does not happen – and it's a first and a prospect, I think you're still chilling because that's just extra uh, offense you can add. And I think that also changes the, identi- changes the identity of your team. Because uh, if you add Chikrin, you're going to be stronger in back, but you might be a little bit less up front. Whereas if you don't get Chikrin, you're not going to be as strong in back. But you probably, if we assume they're going to spend their money how we assume they're going to, you're going to be better up front. So to me, like with the way the winds are blowing... This looks like a really good trade for the Bruins when it happens. <laughs> now, again, who knows what happens this week? Yes. Uh, we could get to minute 29 of this podcast and be like, oh, breaking news, Linus Olmark to the Detroit Red Wings for Lord knows what. And we got to scramble and like, who yes. are these people? Doesn't that? But uh, if it is the Senators, which it feels like it's going to be, um, as you said, I think the Senators kind of have the most to deal. Um Lots of that stuff. There's another element to this, though, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, in division, trading in the division, um, bolstering a divisional opponent. Um, does that would this concern you? I want to get into that, but first a quick word from our friends over at Game Time. Quick break to tell you about my good friends over at Game Time. I am very excited about the NBA playoffs, and what's awesome is here in Boston, Celtics fans make TD Garden the best atmosphere for a playoff game. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes playoff tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the tip off. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Maybe it's the NBA playoffs or it's the MLB regular season. Once the Celtics wrap up, which hopefully ends with a championship, Fenway Park is a great place to spend a summer day or night. Going from TD Garden playoffs to chill, exciting nights at Fenway Park is one of the best times of the year. With game time, there's last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and there's flash deals. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. And there are zone deals. Save even more when you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets with Game Time. So, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. 
Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Now, back to the show. So again, Lena Solmark, if he is to go to Ottawa, uh, they're better. No doubt. I still don't feel like they're in the same class as you. They're not quite there. You know, a lot of young talent for sure. Uh, And we've been kind of waiting for a team like the Senators to emerge over the last couple of years, along with the Sabres and the Red Wings. And honestly, the Sabres would be a team that would be interesting for Omar to go back to. I know he does not want to go there. He (laughs) He will not go to Buffalo. He will not go back to Buffalo. No, but it is funny when you evidently clear. Yeah, but if that had never happened, if let's take all that stuff out of it, uh, it would make sense just in terms of they they have the 11th pick. They're probably going to trade it. Uh, they do need a goaltender. Um, so that would work. But again, there's history there. That's not exactly great. Um, are you worried? Would you be worried about him going to the Senators and bolstering a, a divisional opponent? Uh, I mean, probably not one considering. I think just if they're going to pay such a high premium, it's probably going to make it worth it for you. And I think your team is still better than what they provide. Like, again, like you hope Olmark does well in a new spot, but. You look at like that decor, especially if they're taking away a guy like Chikrin, not to say that he's this, you know, defensive anchor out there. He's got these unreal underlying numbers, but still a good top four guy that eats up 20 plus minutes a night. Like, I don't know, like they've got good pieces, but they're kind of like how Detroit has been the last couple of years. Like, yeah, you look at their their lineup and you see like five or six guys like, all right, that guy's a good player. And then it just doesn't all come together, whether the defense is disjointed, um, you know, like you've got forwards up front who were good players, but like they're lacking in a pretty like, you know, Tim Stutzla's great offensive player, black hole defensively, right? Like you've got like these yeah. guys that, you know, maybe it's, maybe that's also just maturity of just a few more years developing and you know, what the, what a difference a, a goalie can make. So like, I think they'll be better. They'd be on probably on the doorstep, but I think you look at what the Bruins have, um, you know, what they were this past year with Jeremy Swayman, who's still getting better and better with all these franchise guys locked up with the fact that you either have like a guy like Chick or another and, you know, potential impact player added to a team. And that's not counting the fact that who knows who else you add, you know, is it Elias Lindholm? Is it a Toffoli? Is it a, a player like that? Is it, you know, is DeBrusque back? Like you're going to be probably a better team than you were last year. And you're a pretty damn good team. You're a team that gave the, the Florida Panthers a pretty tough series. And again, they, they have their own shit to deal with right now, but um why what I, happened I, yeah I, I i have been keeping tabs but i don't know like yes ottawa does get better but i think you look at where the bruins are um and how they should get better and they're already in a pretty damn good spot right now you know it's like I, you make the division better but it only gets threatening your your spot now we'll talk about this if we're recording uh in april next year and the bruins <laughs> somehow miss a wild card spot and the, the ottawa center surge ahead then we'll look really dumb but or Bruins Senators in I, round one. That would yeah, be great. <laughs> but but I personally don't see that happening. So the yeah, auto gets better, but I don't think it's a direct threat to you. If you're a team maybe like Tampa Bay or someone like that, maybe you're like, oh, I don't like th- those guys getting better. Or your team like Detroit where you're all kind of trying to claw for that wild card spot in a really tough Atlantic, then you're probably like, damn. But I don't know if it's really threatening the Bruins of where they are or where they should be in the next couple of years because they should still be in the mix for a division next couple of years, the way they're built. If a trade makes you better, it doesn't matter who you're doing it with. Like I, I to me, I, st- the Bruins are a different class, you know, especially if it is Chikrin and your, your defense is stacked uh, or you get a first rounder and you either make that pick or you trade it, or I hope they make it. Um, and then suddenly your your prospect pool is better. Like you're better. And then you're adding guys in free agency. The Bruins are going to be a better team than they were uh, this past year, next year. So I'm fine with it. Um, you know, again, if he, if he was going to Toronto, it would be different. Then that package would have to be massive for Lena Solmark because you're the one thing the Leafs have just never been able to have as a goalie. That's what they've been waiting for to get over the hump. Um, so again, I, I'm, I'm not worried about Ottawa. Um, but again, Those words could come back to bite us in a year. Uh, I still am okay with it, though. And I I think, you know, even if Ottawa gets a lot better next year, I expect the Bruins to also get a lot better next year. So I'm not particularly worried about that. Um, Keeping things in the Atlantic division, 
So we're recording this Monday. Game seven it was Monday night. We're recording prior to it. Who knows? Maybe Lena Solmark news will drop. We have to scrap this whole episode and we'll record <laughs> Tuesday or something. The direct, um, the direct is cut. Yeah, exactly. Um, like it happens with trade deadlines. Uh, game seven, Panthers, Oilers. Um, this series has been wild. Looked like the series was done. Panthers up 3-0. It was like, all right, well, it's inevitable. Kind of a shitty cup final just whatever uh has not been the case the oilers have gone sicko mode i think i saw a stat somewhere that like the oilers after they lost three games throughout the year they would always win three games in a row like they're very up and down um if this if the oilers win and complete the comeback which would be the first time since 1942 i remember those years fondly um you what changes to the port oh those Great time. The McGillicuddy nips were flowing back in the 40s. Yes. I mean, my God, it was just a it was great a little time. Bit of, a little bit of hottest stuff back then, but. Yeah. Well, whenever I think of like the old times, this is, sounds weird. Remember uh, Dave Chappelle did that bit, I forget where, about uh, people dancing back then that do like the. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> like that's, I, whenever I think of the 40s and like the 30s, that's what I think of, like those stupid dances. Um, so, yeah, we're doing the dances as the pant as the when I don't know what's I forget what cup it was. We we're so busy dancing. I don't remember who the cup was in 1942. Um, do the pan what kind of changes do the Panthers make? I mean, they have a lot of guys coming up free agency. Um, that, like, does Maurice get fired if they lose? I don't think he does. Like, I, like, I think he's got them to that point, but like, do they go yeah. scorched earth? I don't know. I mean, I don't really know what you do. I don't know how you really come back from that, right? Like, and I, I say, how, how do you come back from that? Not meaning like they're gonna go scorched earth and and rip things up. But like, that's gonna linger with you for a long time. Tell you what, Bruins fans rooting probably for the Panthers to lose, considering their playoff history. But also, man, your first round exit does not feel remotely as bad. And I'm sure the Tampa Bay Lightning feel the same way. Your your uh, playoff losses don't feel as bad as. Choking a 3 0 lead in the Stanley Cup final. Oh, like, not even exactly. close. And like, even <laughs> if I, I, I think I started on like Reddit or something, it's like, even if like the Panthers go on a revenge tour next year and win the cup, you still don't bounce back. You you win a cup in six games next year, doesn't absolve you blowing a, a, a lead like this on this stage. Um, so like, if they lose, I don't know, I don't really know what you do. Like, you've got a great team, they're not going to be as good next year because you've got these these cap issues coming up. You gotta, you're not going to be able to resign all these players. Like, you have to imagine Brendan Montour is gone, but she's already kind of falling out of the equation. Um, a few other yeah, guys like, like replace him with Ekman Larson on those, yeah, like, which again, like, I don't know how sustainable that is. Um, like. I don't know, man. You you just look at the way that team is built. Like Sam Reinhardt, are you are you gonna lose in this fashion? And then you're like, well, now we gotta give Sam Reinhardt ten and a half million. And he's a good player. <laughs> he scored fifty seven freaking goals. Like yeah. but you have to weigh these things. And all these all these cap headaches, all these tough decisions would feel so much better if you had a a, a ring and a Stanley Cup to validate it all. If you don't have that after two back to back years of, of coming up short and losing in this fashion. You're in a rough spot, which if it happens to a Florida Panthers team that I don't think anyone in the NHL likes, great team when they're playing well. But man, you look at all they've done the last couple of months, the respective fan bases they've pissed off between the Bruins and the Rangers and the Tampa Bay Lightning and a whole bunch of other teams. That I think even impartial fans are watching and being like, we're rooting for the Bruins and the Rangers. Something's gone haywire here. Uh, <laughs> exactly. It would be really rough. We, I'm just saying it would be really rough to see a team like that come up short after all that's gone on the last couple of months. So we'll see. Real shame. Real shame. Again, maybe they won. That's the thing. Yeah. You're, you're hearing this probably they the next could, day. They could win. Yeah. They could win. Um, epic collapse if they lose, though. I mean, I, like, I think that's the biggest thing. And you look at the Oilers on the other side, similar story-ish to the 2019 Blues down and out at the beginning of the year, they change coaches. Um, and ever since it's just been terrific and, yeah. you know, down three Oh to stage the comeback. They have McDavid has just been on a completely different level. Um, I, like there's not much you can say. I mean, I saw the athletic did like a ranking of Stanley cup finals since the uh, lockout in 05 and they have this one. Number one already. I don't know if I'd put this one, but it's in the top three. Like, I, cause yeah. I, you know, you don't want to get still, like, I mean, impartial, but 2011 was unreal theater. But like, again, if the Oilers come back and win, 
I don't really know how you argue with that one. I saw people saying like, this is the greatest comeback ever. And I'm like, I still put 04 Red Sox Yankees in terms of the, how dramatic those games were, the history. Like again, yes, the Florida, it's the Florida Panthers. The Flo- it's not the New York Yankees, the Red Sox, it's the Florida Panthers. Like, so this is my thing. And this is why I don't think it's the number one Stanley cup final ever. And again, maybe tonight game seven is a thriller and we're like, you know, it's like, all right, never mind. Just, yeah. Yeah. Like this is way better, which honestly would rock. Cause after this ends, it, <laughs> it falls off a cliff in terms of sports to watch. Um, mm-hmm. So I wouldn't mind like a quadruple overtime, like ends at three in the morning game. Um, however, uh, it's the Panthers. Like, that's really what's, I think, holding this back in terms of like, yeah, it's, they're a hateable team, but like, it's Florida, you know? And I know mm. that they've built themselves up and that's terrific, but if it's Oilers and Bruins or Oilers and Rangers, I think it's a different, there's a different vibe, there's a different feel, the history is there. Um, whereas with this Panthers team, you don't have that. And I think that's sort of what's holding this back from being number one. I did see a tweet last week about, oh, if they came back, this would be more impressive, as you said, than the 04 Red Sox and the 28 to 3 in the Super Bowl. I actually wouldn't put either of those above those. Um, and I know I'm a Boston fan, so, like, you know, I guess I'm biased. But, like, the Yankees had the Red Sox number for like decades. Decades. Forever. Yes. Forever. Since Babe Ruth was traded. Like, these teams have no real history. Um, I'm, and again, I'm not yeah. trying to diminish what the Oilers are doing, but like what yeah. the Red Sox did was us, and, and that was Red Sox Yankees, the height of the rivalry. Oilers Panthers is not this great rivalry, you know. Like you had such yes. a it, Red Sox Yankees 04 was on a completely different level, and 28 yes. to three. It's hard to compare a game to a series, but like, but just run one the freaking game. ball, it is, <laughs> just yeah, run yeah. the ball. Yeah. Um, and they didn't, and they completely messed it up. So again, I I put those two higher than this if the Oilers pull it off. Again, not diminishing what the Oilers have done, because holy crap, if they do pull it off, it would be yeah. uh, sensational. Do you want to make a prediction? Uh, I have Oilers. That Florida team looks f- fucking rattled. Though that Completely those shots rattled. on the bench of that and again, like it, it's hockey. You get I'll I'll say this and Florida will win three one. They'll be locked in early on, and that will happen because it's hockey. But like, man, like you even look at like how the Bruins last year were going to that game seven. I think it was Kachuk being like. Oh, all the pressure's on the Boston now. We're we're playing with house money. We're not feeling nervous at all. Why should we be nervous? We're coming in there. Like they're the ones who got all the the pressure on them. Like sure feels like the the uh, it, the narrative has shifted now. And Florida's feeling that way, right? Your second Stanley Cup final on the brink of getting bounced again. How good you were. How much how much you've carved a path through all these teams, and it would end like that. It's a lot of pressure. I don't no know how they get thrown on the ice. So no, I don't know how they get back there. Um immediately you know maybe in a year or two or maybe in two years but um three straight years is hard and finally winning it you know that's a difficult thing i want the oilers but i think the panthers pull it out i do and i don't know i i i always feel let down in these big games like they're either not close or what i want to happen doesn't happen it gets so overhyped um and i also feel like the oilers peaked a little bit in game six like it, it was such a fever pitch of holy crap they're doing this and then go you know and I, I i completely agree the pressure is fully on florida like i'm not saying it's not on the oilers it isn't um but i just feel like the oilers might have peaked a little bit and i just have this bad feeling the panthers are going to pull it out and that's how i feel and i i just the way a series goes um I don't, it doesn't really matter that they're at home. I just think like they've been so humiliated that the only way it is up. And I just think yeah. that that's what's going to happen. But hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong because boy, would it be funny if the Florida Panthers blew a 3 nothing lead. It just blew up in their face and uh, it continued on. But we'll see what happens. Should be hell of a game to watch. Um, again, we've already... People have already seen it, but I guess we're already discussing things that have that have happened. Uh, Connor, what can the people look forward to from you over at the Globe and Boston.com? Yeah, we've covered every step related this offseason, whether it's free agency, trades, the draft, maybe if we have to do a first round uh, <laughs> mock oh. uh, mock draft or something like that on the fly, which would be a good problem. Got to do have, it. But good rock. But uh, we'll help you cover with all that stuff over at the Globe and Boston.com. So you can read all my stuff over there. If you want to follow me on Twitter, X, whatever it is, you can follow me at Connor Ryan underscore 93. 
Go do all that. That's Connor Ryan. I'm Evan Marinovsky. Burns be listeners. Have a great rest of your week. <laughs>